Hi everyone, welcome to Push Talker Live. I'm your host, my name is Chanel. You can follow me on social media at it's Chanel. Joining us today is Soka Shirts, okay? So we're waiting for Soka Shirts to join the live and get right into it, alright? Soka Shirts, hey Soka Shirts! <laughs> Hello to everyone that's tuning in also. Okay, let me get her on the live, guys. Hey! Hi! I'm so sorry I'm a little late. No, no, it's okay. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I good thanks see. for having me no it's no problem at all no problem at all can you hear me good uh-huh okay good perfect how's your day going so far it's going good i'm in soca shirts yeah <laughs> nice getting nice. orders and stuff together so yeah hmm. okay okay so tell us about your brand soca shirts okay so actually um i was living so i'm from louisiana um, and my mom's side is uh, Dominican and Blackfoot Indian. So my mom's side is from Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, mm -hmm. and Blackfoot Indian from Louisiana. My dad's side is some kind of African, I would say like from Gambia or something, uh, but yeah. they're Cherokee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in the midst of all that, it's a lot of hot blood running through me, which is why you see so mm -hmm. much energy. Yes. But um, I was living in Atlanta one time and um, I had broken my ankle. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time, I was still looking for stuff to wear to Atlanta's carnival that year. And I couldn't find what I wanted. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to create it. Yeah. And then boom, I created something and um, Jamboree Mass, actually, they were the first that same time I created it, it was like within a month's time, Jamboree Mass had me on the road for Atlanta. So I was looking for something to wear to Atlanta and it ended up on the road in Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, in 2017. It was crazy. So um, from then, I just kind of just started making more different things as it related to like graphic tees, because that's really what I was looking for. Like when you go to Juve, what do you wear? You know, you want something that you could just kind of mess up yeah all, all sexy and you know yeah sort of, yeah. yeah something that's sexy something mm -hmm. that's cute but something that has something that represents the caribbean culture on it you know exactly. something that you can look yeah. at and i can look at and you can know what it means and i can know what it means but nobody else will probably know what it means you know exactly yeah and um just between that and like going to fets and stuff i was like i'm not a real dressy person i will wear crop tops and shorts mm -hmm. to every event <laughs> Yes, but I wanted it to be something, you know, I wanted it to look like something. I wanted it to be sexy, but I also wanted to not fall out when I was dancing, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, yes. okay. Then boom, it kind of came that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the fact that, you know, you're still going to go to your fets and parties, even if you break your ankle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen you should have seen me on the road for um on the road in Atlanta for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Um that year that they put me on the road, I was in a boot on wow. crutches. That's determination. That's <laughs> so listen. Soka doesn't stop us. Like parties, you need to keep going. You don't know. And, uh, <laughs> okay. So how long have you been doing soca shirts for them? Yeah, so um, that would be, I started in 2017, so I want to say like four years now. Actually, as long as I've been growing my locks, that business has been okay. running, so yeah. they're kind of one so of the same. So where are you actually based on? So I'm based in Texas, okay. um, but when I started, I was based in Atlanta, right? which is why I have such a great connection with everybody in Atlanta now, because mm -hmm. I started there, so it's like, I was their baby, you know? Okay. Um, so yeah. yeah, I went to Atlanta, then I went 
to New Orleans and linked up with some people there because I'm from Louisiana, but I had just never been into the Caribbean scene in New Orleans. Mm. So then when I went to New Orleans and got there, I linked up with those people and kind of mm. maneuvered my way around. And so it's kind of funny because a lot of people will think that I still live there or I'm still kind of connected there. And mm. I'm really not. I mean, it's home for me, obviously, but it's just yeah. me. Like I'm a single person. Mm -hmm. I've always only been a single brand, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's the soca scene is very big in the States. Yeah, it is, yeah. actually. I mean, um, so connected. Yeah, so actually for a long time, uh, I went to college at Western State University, and that's in Texas, in the north yeah. part of Texas. But there was a huge Caribbean population there. Wow. And that's actually where I picked up soca because growing up, I lived in Louisiana, so I never really heard soca. I heard a lot of dance hall, I heard a lot mm -hmm. of um, reggae, um, mm -hmm. and of course, different type of Louisiana music. But as it related to soca, I didn't really hear that until I got to college, and that was in 2007. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, but then in 2007, if you can remember, I don't really know how old you are, but in 2007 mm -hmm. is when you kind of started seeing it like a little change in soca music. You know, you kind of mm -hmm. started seeing a mm. you know a heavier rhythm or you know maybe a more groovy rhythm like you started seeing some yeah, different yeah yeah, yeah like I, I, yeah i would say before it was very calypso oriented which is mm -hmm. i love calypso don't get me wrong but i think that soca music started to take a different shape yeah. around 2007 you know it was like i don't know it was like more fet vibes i guess i don't really mm -hmm. know how to explain it but that's where I kind of picked it up. And at my college, um, it was everything. We did carnivals all the time. Um, mm -hmm. We had They had mass bands that, that everybody were doing themselves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it was different because we had full-on carnival in college. Okay. We had concerts. We had artists it's coming down. how you picked it up, like, the culture so quick. And yeah, you know, I, I, it was. Is it? It's in your blood. You know what I'm yeah, saying. So because yeah. that's why I said I have a lot of hot blood running through me. Mm -hmm. um, and being from Louisiana, if you've never been to Louisiana, Louisiana is going to be one of the most cultured states you might ever see in the United States. Okay. Simply because of everything that has been there. Like number one, it's been taken over by the Spanish and the French. So we okay. speak Creole in Louisiana. It's a different okay. kind of Creole, but we speak a Creole mm -hmm. in Louisiana. Um, either that or you'll have some people that speak straight French. Like my dad spoke nothing but French when I was growing up. So um, it's kind of surprising, but it's really not just, just based off of the fact that my family is native already right. and African and then Spanish. So that's three hot bloods running mm -hmm. into one. And it was just more of like a remembering versus a teaching. Mm -hmm. It was like, wait, I know this. I don't know how I know this, but I know yeah, this. <laughs> Okay. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Okay. So how can we buy your clothing? Like, do you sell it online? Like, how is it sold? Yeah, I have a website that's in my bio. So if you click the link okay. in my bio, you'll see some things. But really, um, if you DM me, I'm really down to earth. You can totally DM me if you wanted me to totally. make you something in particular. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I make stuff for people all the time, even if it's not like my brand. There's a couple people that I'll do um, their brand for. So like Push Soka, for example, if you wanted some cute stuff on like maybe like a panty or something, yeah. <laughs> you know, I could put Push Soka on here somewhere and then, okay. you know, mail it to you. So it's just really like up to whoever and what they want. Mm -hmm. But for some stuff that I've already made, like this, for example, like these mm -hmm. shirts, uh, somebody's yeah. daughter, somebody's sons or the Play Soka, which is a really popular one. Mm -hmm. Get a couple things. I should have had them over here. But yeah. Yeah. So like, if you're looking for play soca or different things like that, like I have stuff. You just have to either look on my website, and if you don't see something there, because a lot of times I'll swap things out just yeah. because of the time frame of it all. Like things are changing, you know. Mm -hmm based off of like seasons and stuff so it just really kind of depends. I love the colors you choose as well and yeah we just, just represent the whole Caribbean culture and how we are just I love that. No I really appreciate that so yeah. much I just in my head I'm always thinking 
I always run into a lot of women, more importantly, right? Mm -hmm. And because I dance so much, they're like, let's dance, girl, let's go. I'm like, yeah, let's get on stage, let's go. <laughs> but in the midst of doing that, I always am watching just to make sure, like, make sure they don't fall out, make sure I don't fall out, you know? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, that's like always in my mind when I'm designing stuff, even for men, even for guys, like, is this gonna be too tight for the guys? Or yeah. is this type of shirt too tight? Or how is, you know? And I'll, I'll send stuff out to people, too, so they can kind of give me feedback on what it is. So it's really not all me. It's like I'll try something, and if it hits, people will come in my inbox and say, hey, this works this way, this is good this way, this didn't really fit, girl, don't do that again, or oh, whatever. I'm really open as a person. So I think that it's a combination of the community as a whole because you all support me so much, and you're willing to give me your opinion and advice and tell me what you want, then I can do better at what I'm doing. Okay, I love that. Oh, okay. So a lot of parties are happening right now in the states. I'm sure you know it's on your way of everything. Have you been to any parties recently? Yeah, I just came back from Atlanta. <laughs> but prior to that, I went to yes. uh, Orlando, and yeah, Orlando. It? Yeah, it was great. Orlando had something called Invasion Weekend, mm -hmm. and it was done by like three different promoters. So they had three different parties. But we were in there jam-packed, really and truly. And um, yes, I take my elderberry and my vitamin C, but I didn't get sick. It was all outside. Yeah. So I think that as they're doing events, as they're cautioning themselves, as long as they're happening outside where people can distance themselves away from each other, because we're all adults, we know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. And if I'm whining on a man, he's behind me anyway, so it doesn't matter. And my head's down most of the time, and he's up here. So that's like six feet away, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was nice, though. But there was a lot of people. I, wanna, I would say close to, like, yeah. if not 1,000, 2,000 people. There was a lot that's of people true. there. Oh. Yeah. And that I was in Orlando. Feel, so. Like, you know, that everything's coming back. We're getting some sort of normality back. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm with it because honestly, like through the whole pandemic, I still did stuff. Like I still worked. I was still hosting dance classes. I was yeah. still hosting events, even though they were like small events for like, you know, 30 people and up, I was still hosting them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time. I just think that we'll, the downtime we had, people just need to be more responsible about their next moves because yeah. that's exactly what that was for. A lot of times we need to just be still in life. And I think that that was that time frame. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just as long as everybody moves forward and protects themselves and exactly. doesn't, you know, <laughs> intentionally get other people sick, then I think we'll be fine. Okay. So what's one thing that this pandemic has taught you then? To not be shy. Um, mm -hmm. On contrary to popular belief, I'm actually pretty shy as a person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I do realize that what I do draws a different kind of light so mm -hmm. i have to be out in front i have to get up there and do i have to speak sometimes or i have to do interviews <laughs> yeah, yeah. or i have to get on a stage and you know broke out whatever <laughs> but it's really taught me to just like for one thing for us to all know is that there's a paradigm shift going on and right. the people that were once older and in charge mm -hmm. they're old and they are tired. Mm -hmm. So we are now stepping into those places, which is most important for us now. So what's been on my mind lately is because of all of that, how can I do this in the best, most positive light? Yeah. You know, how can I represent this culture in the best, most positive light? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How can we continue to push Soka to yeah. push our culture, to push us as a people forward mm -hmm. within the best positive light? Yeah. You know, and just to focus on that, just because we're the leaders now, like we are stepping into those places. Again, I don't know how old you are. I'm 32, but we're the leaders right now. We're stepping into those places. We are replacing all of those old promoters, all of those old band, um, band managers. The times like, are just evolving, you know? Yes. So, yeah. It's a paradigm shift. We're literally doing this, <laughs> you know? And so in the midst of that, in the midst of the pandemic, that's what I kept thinking. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. We're literally in a paradigm shift. Like, we're taking, we're replacing everybody. It's our turn. So what are we going to do now that it's our turn? Yeah. How are we going to do better? 
than what they did. They paved the way for us, really and truly. They laid a nice, solid foundation for us. But what can we do to get us okay. to that next level? Okay. I like that. Yeah. So, so that's uh, really confident in your body <laughs> and in your skin. You know, tell us like how that kind of stemmed from. Where did it come from? Like, because you know, I know confidence is something that women, you know, we have to just not. It didn't really just happen like overnight. I'm sure. Yeah, so, like, no, it didn't. Talk to us about that. It for me, I have to give it to my mom, really and truly, because my mom growing up, because I'm a tall girl, so I'm I'm five ten, yeah. right? So okay. for a long time, I was tall, was awkward, <laughs> right? Yeah. And my mom would always be like, what's wrong with you? Do you know how beautiful you are as a person? It's not about what you look like on the outside. Because what you look like on the outside is not going to do anything for you. Yeah. People see your soul. People think that they see this part, but they see your soul first. Mm -hmm. And if they can't say good things about you naturally as a person because of your soul, then... And then if they can't, why are you with them? So because that, she told me that from young. And from young, I was just like, okay, then just hold my head high and keep going. It is what it is, you know? Like, mm -hmm. be strong, be confident. And another thing is, you never realize how many people are watching you. Exactly, yeah. And I have siblings underneath me. I have three brothers and a sister. So I didn't have any room to be anything but yeah. confident and loud and very dramatic and just mm -hmm. bold. I didn't have a choice because I didn't want them to be meek and and just you know insecure or anything like that because nobody determines our reality but us true and that's what i had to get in my mind was that who who <laughs> i'm gonna allow other people to determine my happiness mm -hmm. to determine my beauty because i think yeah. i'm beautiful just like i am you know like i don't feel like i need makeup or nothing like that <laughs> you know yeah. and you are too yeah. but society is like you need the BBL body. Mm -hmm. You need to have lashes out to exactly. here. You need mm -hmm. to have this kind of makeup on. Even in the carnival world, really and exactly. truly, they portray the models to be BBL models, really and truly. Like, the costumes be this big, and their ass be this big, <laughs> and their body, yeah. and everything, every part of them is this big. Mm -hmm. But girls look like me. Exactly. Okay, and I have a I belly. It. I don't know if y'all see this, but this is not yeah. my pants. I'm just going to think right here, okay? Yes. Yeah. Everybody looks like me. We look, so exactly. it's like, it's everywhere. And it's more, and it hurts more when it's your own culture because mm -hmm. nobody looks like that. We mm -hmm. don't look like that. So how would you, like, advise anyone who's, you know, struggling with their confidence? And what advice would you give them? Um, number one is don't compare you, yourself, your body, your car, your house, your life, nothing to anybody. Because you're working hard to get where you are and you can't level yourself with somebody else who's not even on, even in your realm. Like, <laughs> we are, if you can think about us, we are essentially our own planet. So if I'm Earth and you're Pluto, how can we compare? Exactly. We can't. We have two different functions. And the most important thing that people need to really remember is that we are here on this earth for a reason. So what is your reason? Mm -hmm. Is it to talk to people and to to get, keep their minds right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or is it to silently lead people like by just posting things? Or is it to instill confidence in people? What is your passion? What is your purpose here on earth? Like if we can just remember that we came here for earth not to play but <laughs> whatever our passion is to clean up the earth somehow, you know, to clean up oil fields. Like we have so many oil refineries in the United States and stuff that includes all about water. So if that's your, you know, your passion, if that's what you're here to do, if you're a scientist or if you're a botanist or whatever, like whatever it is that you're supposed to do, that's your focus. Yeah. If you can focus on your purpose. Exactly then you won't be looking anywhere else for anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. I think we don't focus on our purpose. We, we're too distracted. It's yeah, too much. Uh, and, you know, it's it's social media as well. It, it is. A huge impact. It is. People. So, literally, I love that. Don't compare your life to anyone else. Because any day, social media, everyone posts their highlights. You don't really know what's going on in a, anyone's life. You don't that part. To... <laughs> because <Yeah. so laughs> the same person you're comparing to, they probably yeah. sleeping 
outside exactly. or something in their car or something and they're they're trying to get you to give them money and do this and do that like no don't compare yourself to anybody especially when you are the only person that's literally building your path like for example with soca shirts yes i've come in contact with many people i mean i'm talking artists i'm talking anybody restaurant owners mm -hmm. everything right but nobody put in the work that i put in Nobody has been up in here till four or five o'clock yes. in the morning when I had to go to my real job at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then still find time to go mail everything out. Like nobody's doing all that but me. Yeah. And that's that's what I that's at the top of my brain. Like I don't have time to to compare myself to anybody else because I'm working so hard. <laughs> yeah. Focus. Literally, I'm always thinking like, what can I do? Yeah, what can I do next? Like, oh, I got this hat. I'm so excited to use it. What am I going to put on it? You know, like, that's what I'm always thinking about. So I think that maybe that's what it is. People just need to, like, rebalance and refocus throughout yeah. throughout the days. And just, um, there's one thing that I do follow. Um, there's a 42, 42 Laws of Maat, M-A-A-T. It come from ancient Egypt. But basically, if you read them all, there's something similar to the Ten Commandments. But it's basically holding yourself accountable for everything that you're doing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you are judgment day is not at the end, you know, like they're saying it's your judgment day is every day. Cause you're judging yourself based off of things that you have put out into the universe, people that you have helped for that day, mm -hmm. your creativity, you know, did you think bad thoughts or did you think positive thoughts? Like you are judging yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we could live along those lines of just self judgment throughout the day and just constantly, elevating ourselves i don't think we would have too many issues <laughs> i love that you really really i like your energy how you're just positive and the way you look on life your views on life it's, it's inspirational i love that thank you so much no okay so tell us about we check in oh girl <laughs> okay <laughs> that is a baby that i have that yeah. is <laughs> Tell us about you know, it. still in the works, but yes, let's talk about we check in. I absolutely mm -hmm. love we check in. So mm -hmm. a while ago, actually throughout the pandemic, I would see um I have a lot of women following me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So throughout the pandemic, I would see a lot of girls posting things about like being depressed or mm -hmm. career issues, like not knowing how to move about within their career or friendship issues or man issues and so mm -hmm. that's how we check in was born because one girl one day posted this long post about how she was having suicidal thoughts and mm -hmm. things of that nature and i was thinking to myself she has no she has no sisters she can't because she doesn't feel comfortable enough to go talk to anybody yeah. so we check in is born of that to create a sister space um for us as women, us as entrepreneurs, us as the entrepreneur who also has a nine to five, you know, yeah. because yeah. just me in general, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And all I'm doing is sleeping for like two or three hours, but I'm always going. I don't have any kids or anything, but I'm thinking about th that woman. Yeah. She had a child. She was, you know, doing her one entrepreneur thing and then also had her nine to five mm -hmm. and then a child on her own. Wow, of yeah. course, you're depressed. Of course you're going through what you're going through because now you're just ripping and running and you're giving everything to everybody, but nothing is coming back into you. And so us within that class of women, mm -hmm. who do we run to? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Everybody runs to us. Mm -hmm. And so that's how that was developed. It's um, women elevating um, wellness. Yeah. Yeah, and so I was doing a once a week check in, and I would get mm -hmm. um, some speakers to come about. And I'm formulating something coming up, trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. But I just, for that particular platform, I like it to be more interactive because it's like a therapy. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a matter of this is where you come to to release. You have questions about anything on how to release or whatever. Like, yeah, this is what it's for. If you want to share your testimony. That's exactly what it's for. It's, it's so that you are not in your room contemplating suicide. It's so that you are, so that you can build value back to yourself because that's why people feel like that because they don't have that value within themselves. They don't see how important they are to the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And that's selfish. It's selfish to think that you're not important. Yeah. 
it's selfish to think that you were put here for nothing. So that's what we check in is for. Recheck in is for exactly that to build that character okay. back up. What's the just shout out the page so you know? Yeah, it's we w dot e dot check in dot check in. Yeah, definitely follow that. There's some um, lives on there that you guys can go back to and see. There were some really good lives too, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, I had gotten a couple girls around around the world really <laughs> to do lives with me. I had um, a doula. I had um, a girl that has a woman's um, womb healing center here. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually went to her and did it. And she talks about Yoni themes and just, you know, women's health because Another thing is, whenever I was growing up, we really wasn't taught yoni steaming and no. things like that. You know, Perfect. like that's all stuff I kind of like, found out like along the women, way. A safe space for us to just, you know, follow the page and just, yeah. you know, discuss, you know, women's stuff about us. Yes, yes. Oh, like things that you need as a woman. Like yeah. if you have a question about it, that's where you go and ask it. And nobody will look at you any kind of way because we're all confused. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah. That's how you have a sisterhood. That's how you build a sisterhood. We can figure it out together. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so why is women empowerment, you know, so important to you? And why it should be very important to every woman? Well, it really and truly, I'm going to say this, and people are not going to like me when I say it, but I don't really <laughs> care. <laughs> because it needs to be said. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Now, they say it behind every good man is a woman that's not how it works mm. if you think about every man that you've had contact with you influence him to do better you were in front of him you were leading him correct or not yeah doesn't work the opposite way mm -hmm. and that is the most important thing so i think that if we are empowered as women then we can take our rightful places back to where we was, which was at the front. Yes, the man is there to be the protector. Yes, we are on an equal plane. But at the same time, I know what my role has been in these men's lives. Mm -hmm. And it has been just that. It's been leading. Yes, I've been leading from behind him, but I'm leading him, which makes me in front. <laughs> True. But because of who I am as a person, I don't need to be in front or in back. I can lead you from wherever. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the most important thing because then it's not going to be such um, a battle between whoever, but a battle between me and you, a battle between me and a spouse, a battle between me and a superior or a coworker, because I know not how to, I now know how to maneuver between everybody mm -hmm. because of my confidence, because I'm, I'm able to be humble enough to say, okay, I get your opinion on that. So how would you like to do that? How would you like to proceed forward? And we could just go with you. That's leading. Mm -hmm. I led you in that direction that's leading yeah. <laughs> you know so again people probably won't like it when I say that but it's the truth like the only way that you're not leading as a woman in a relationship is if you are being controlled yeah yeah and that's the same way in a job like I was just working for LA Fitness and um, I was in a lower role, in a sales counselor role, but everybody that came in there thought that I was the general manager. They thought that I was running the place. It was a combination of how I looked because I was dressed to the T every day, mm -hmm. but also how I carried myself, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And every time I would tell them, I'm not a manager. Mm -hmm. I, I can't help, I can't do any of that stuff. And mm -hmm. they were like, what, you're not? But I didn't have to tell them I was anything. I didn't have to show them I was anything. They felt that, yeah, right? Energy. I, yes. I can feel it too, just over the live. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Like that's why that's why that's passionate for me as a woman because I want other women to do that. Like yeah. we have that essence naturally. Just as melanated people, we have that essence. You can stand there and not say nothing, and they're gonna be like, "Who is mm -hmm. she? She's an artist. I know she is. She's something. What is mm -hmm. she? Right?" Just because of your melanin, just because of your presence. Yeah. But being a woman is way more powerful than that. Yeah. We do so much. You can't tell me that right. we are not up here when we are creating <laughs> life. We are creating yes. businesses. I mean, mm -hmm. even being here in Dallas, I don't know how many businesses I've helped people create. Mm -hmm. How many LLCs I've helped create, but you would never know because I, what am I going to put that up there for? It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Right? But that's the whole purpose of it. 
So that's where the passion comes in because I want everybody to be just like that. I think we would go so much further if we could just, I can give you two words and that, that's going to change your mind. And you're going to go and be like, okay, well, let me go and let me use Canva to do my videos on <laughs> Instagram, you know, or let me use Photoshop. I didn't know how to use that. And you just told me something new. Let me go use that. Okay. I love so that. that's why. <laughs> okay. okay. So would you ident identify yourself as a dancer or like, how do you identify yourself? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're an entrepreneur in it, so it doesn't really matter. You're yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> actually identify as a dancer at all because I really don't think that I can dance like that. I just, it's just always yeah, but you know, For real though, you really, li literally, your videos, <laughs> mad. Like, That's crazy though. I'm telling you, I've never ever in my life <laughs> thought that I was a dancer. Even now, yeah. I don't say that I'm a dancer. I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I'm the shirts girl. I'll make the shirts. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> No, I just have to put them on because I got to make videos. But yeah, that's me. So how do you feel like seeing like your dance videos on these huge platforms? Oh my God, they made me freak out. Yeah. <laughs> um, because <laughs> number one, I'm thinking to myself, wait, y'all are definitely portraying me as a dancer. And yeah. that's not, <laughs> you know, that's not what I am specifically. Mm -hmm. But then I can't really say that because I teach a dance class, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that I just have to come to grips with the fact that I might be a dancer a little bit. <laughs> so I'll just own it. <laughs> oh. Because people already think I'm a dancer. They think mm -hmm. I'm a dancer before they think I make the shirts. Mm -hmm. You know, once you know it's a wine and you're good at it, people will automatically think you're <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about your um, fitness class. Yeah, so I have a fitness class called Bear Vibes. And actually, again, that was another thing that kind of started randomly. So I was living in New Orleans, and um, I was looking for a soca fitness class, mm -hmm. right? And I couldn't really find what I was looking for. I ran into uh, Trini Cindy, and she was teaching a soca fitness class. Um, but her class was more so like Zumba with uh, soca music. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But I was looking for a, I was looking for more of like a fitness class. I was looking for a boot camp style class, you know, more of like, like more exercise, but also more whining. And mm -hmm. what she had was just like Zumba oriented, which is fine. But so then I started just kind of looking around for some other classes and I couldn't find anything. And I ran into a girl where she had her studio at. And the girl ended up being like a cousin, a distant cousin. I'm from Louisiana, so that happens. Our last name is Joseph. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, girl, your last name is Joseph? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we cousins. <laughs> so talking to her, um, she allowed me, allowed us to do a class. We did a class together, and we called it Sweat Fit. And it was three of us. Um, at first, it was me, her, and Trini Cindy. And then Trini Cindy dropped out. And it was me, Mo is her name, Mojo, and a girl named Taki. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was us three, I've and we seen, did. That, um, I've seen her on Instagram, Taki. Oh, yeah. Gosh. So it was three of us, and we did a class called Sweat Fed. It was two mm -hmm. hours. Um, Mojo would teach uh, New Orleans bounce and other mm -hmm. kind of New Orleans or Louisiana affiliated music. She does like a bounce twerk type thing. Um, uh, Taki used to do more denry. So she would do like St. Lucia music and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would just come in with everything else, whether it be groovy soca or power soca or what have you. I would just fall in line with everything else. And also because my people are from Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. I definitely put in some uh, bachata and some salsa and some things okay. like that. Um, so that's how that class was born. And that's how I started actually teaching classes. And mm -hmm. because before then I wasn't, I just was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just going to find something. That class went on and we did really well with that class. People loved that class. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up moving back here to Dallas. And um, as soon as I got here, people were like, are you teaching a class or whatever? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not even a dancer. <laughs> you just What's up, team? <laughs> um, I was like, no, nah, I'm not even a dancer. So, um, but they were like, no, nah, we need your class. So then, boom, mm. that class was created. It's called Bear Vibes. Yeah. Um, and I created that class during the pandemic out here. I'll have you know. <laughs> and 
just from there, it just kind of grew itself. So I taught that class all of last year. I was doing Zoom and I was doing Instagram Live. Yeah. And then um, came back around this year and I now teach it at the girl's place. Um, her place is called Motivate Your Womb Healing Center. Okay. So I teach my class there because um, I want the women that are coming to be able to use her services. So if you want a Yoni steam or if you need like some Paul mm -hmm. Santo or whatever, like she has a whole healing shop. Mm -hmm. uh, she has sea moss. She has like burdock root and things mm -hmm. of that nature, turmeric peels, uh, mm -hmm. maca root, things like that. So if that's what you're looking for, I, I like my whole thing with fitness and wellness is to also be in a fitness and wellness type of environment. Yeah. So if I'm going to be teaching you that, I also need you to be able to go over here and be like, oh, yeah, I want this and I want that. Yeah. Which so I, yeah, yeah. So I chose that place and boom, now I'm in Dallas teaching classes and stuff. <laughs> you really, you know, inspired. You're really inspirational. Like you're very, you know, you do a lot. You know, yeah. you, work. you seem like you really work hard, and I love that. I, I just try to like fill in the spaces, do their thing. Like, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I just try to fill in the spaces. I told yeah. you I'm going through a paradigm shift. So, right mm -hmm. now, if that's what I have to do until, you know, somebody else comes in and takes, yeah. And then I can just fall in line in the class, <laughs> that'll be fine. But because yeah. we are shifting so much in these times, like, exactly. Yeah. We, somebody has to step up. And so I just, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, I think I can do that. Let me try it. And if I give a good, if I get a good response from it, then I'm like, all right, cool. I'll keep going. But if not, I'm like, then I'll just put this on pause for right now and come back. <laughs> so talk to us about your DMs. You know, do you get like them? You know, those men slipping in the DMs when you post a video. Like, <laughs> tell us about your DMs. <laughs> uh, yeah. You get those, yeah. you know. Actually, yes. So my DMs don't ever blow up until I post a video, which oh, is a lot of times I'd be hesitant to post <laughs> because I'd be like. <laughs> yeah. But the majority of the time, it's, it's that. It'll be some guys um, saying you know the normal outlandish yeah. stuff and <laughs> but mainly though for me um i actually i think i get a lot of respect because for me it, a lot of times it's like the artists that'll hit me up and be like hey i like this video mm -hmm. um can you do something to my song yeah and then i'm like yeah cool which is fine i'm always with doing something for artists but sometimes mm -hmm. um it's all about the inspiration for me so sometimes it's hard for me to do something to their song if I'm not really inspired, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I really like music that, especially soca music, and I hate to call it conscious, but like conscious music to where mm -hmm. it's meaning something, it's saying something. So I'll end up doing something like that. But yeah, so that's what happens in my DMs. A lot of times it's <laughs> that. <laughs> or it's Comments just... Um, so DMs are slideable or not? Uh, <laughs> nah, Taz, I'm just kidding. Yes, go ahead and slide. <laughs> That's my DJ friend while he's playing. <laughs> hey, DJ Blue Fire. <laughs> All of my friends. Hey, you guys. What's up? Or it's girls. It's girls. Mm -hmm. Girls will be like, I get a lot of girl DMs. Yeah, because you, know, you know, a lot of women, I'm sure. Yes. They're, watching, they're like, you know, like, they just watch you like in a way of, I love her confidence. Like, I'm, yes. I like that's what it is. Like, because, yes. you know, some women, they'd be like, oh, I wish I can do that. Yeah, I just see the video I'm like, oh wow. Because when I see so many videos, I'm like, oh my god, the way she whining made me want to get up and start whining. Girl, <laughs> I swear, that's hilarious. Like, you. Like, honestly, Man, no, no, that's exactly what it is. A lot of people they'll yes. come on my DMs and they'll be like, hey girl, how'd you do that? Or, how'd you do this? Or send me that video. I want to practice it. Can you slow it down or whatever? So stuff like that. Or one of my good friends is on here now. Her name is uh, Tatiana. Mm hmm. Her name is Tatiana, but her name is Soka Diva Dimples. But um, she'll be in my inbox all the time. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all the time with inspirational quotes. Or she'll find something to be like, hey, can you make this for me? Or just different things like that. Um, she's one of the people that's constantly pushing me forward. She'll be like, girl, did you try like fishnet underwear or something? You know, like she'll <laughs> give me like some different kind of little ideas mm -hmm. to try. So, um, 
if it's girls, it'll be some stuff like that. Like they're really encouraging or they're asking me how I do this or if I want to do a dance with them and like meet up with them or if I can do like a private dance class with them or whatever, like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but as far as like guys go, it'll be like one or two creeps. You got like yes. five or five hundred. Always on stuff like a creep, at least one or two people. creeps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it comes with the territory. But me, the person that I am, I just go ahead and shut it down one time. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, I love it. So, what is you know what song right now is uh, is literally on your playlist on repeat? Which soca song right now? Uh, <laughs> let's see what soca song. Hmm. Um, dang, we're on this phone. I'll play some music for you, but we're on this phone. Hmm. Um. They, I have a really long list. Right. <laughs> okay. Tell us your top three. <laughs> Look at him. Party. All of them. This is this is true. All of them. <laughs> no, since Cheem was on the live, I'm going to go ahead and shout out Cheem because Cheem yes. has been coming with some bangers the past. Yeah. What? Man, he's been coming Jeez, with it. And Cheem, Cheem's rhythms be getting me. So I'm going to go ahead and shout out Cheem one time for the one time since he's on here. Um, uh, the father just put one out and it was called Bounce. Um, bounce that bumper girl, bounce that bumper yes. girl, bounce, yeah, up, down, yeah. <laughs> I like the songs that um, yes. have like uh, instructions in them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, and then Tedis and John right now, Tedis and John has a song mm -hmm. called Back to Basics. Mm -hmm. um, and in the songs, he's talking about um, going back to love, like getting to the root of it all, which is love. Like if we could just love in every essence, love mm -hmm. what you do love your work love the people that you talk to or just speak with words of love yeah. like i think that that's something that we don't realize is everything that we speak we're speaking it into existence whether it's good or bad yes. whether it is a hesitant or if it's a positive whether it's a thought or it's a confident thought like we're speaking all of that we're making everything come true so when i hear that song like it's reminding me that speak everything with love and speak everything with confidence and that's you're going to give that same light to everybody else and they're going to be able to give it to other folks too. Yeah. So I like that song. Um, what other song? Mm -hmm. the, so are you more like a groovy or power? Like so, okay. When I first, I would say groovy. Groovy. Okay. But um, I love small island songs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Adam O is one of my favorite people. Yeah. <laughs> Ace of Banton, like all of those Triple K, yes. Triple K band, like mm -hmm. any any small island rhythms. She loves us. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but or Trini Bad, you know I can hear mm -hmm. Trini Bad, but um, like yeah. rhythms though, I'm telling you, I could just really just listen to rhythms all day and not hear mm -hmm. no words on a song and be just fine. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I kind of look for in music. I always hear the rhythms first. I hear the drums. I hear I hear the instruments and stuff before I hear anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's what draws me in. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started, though, it was Groovy Soca. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like uh, GBM. I feel like they tricked me with the Calypso. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love the rhythm of that as well. Yes. And GBM is one of my favorite artists. Yes. So will you be at Miami Carnival? That's the plan. The plan yeah. is to go to Miami Carnival. Um, still deciding how we're going to play and what we're going to play, but I'm affiliated with a group called um, RBG Carnival. Mm -hmm. um, and RBG Carnival represents, um, I would say they kind of represent what's missing as it relates to us being all black, right? Okay. So there is the RBG flag, which is red, black, and green. The red represents the blood of us, the green represents the land, and the black represents our melanin, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, again, when I do stuff, I like to do it with purpose. Yeah. And so playing with them is kind of representing us as a people. Like, yes, we're separated by water and by land, but ultimately, if you didn't open your mouth and I'd open my mouth and we stood next to each other, I, we still wouldn't know what we were saying. Mm -hmm. We could look at each other and we still wouldn't know. We're only divided by invisible borders, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, I would probably play with RBG Carnival um, just because of how we represent what we represent. It's yeah. like we're representing uh, us as a people as well as a culture, Yeah, you know? Um, 
So yeah, Miami Carnival for sure. The last time I went to Miami Carnival, I was with D Junction. Yeah. And that was definitely vibes. <laughs> we can't wait to see the videos, you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wait though, you have to calm down or something. What are I'd you gonna do? To, listen, I'd love to. Oh. I'd love to. I literally have to plan it and do something and come. Literally. Yes, come. You have to do something. I don't know I what have you have to, make to do, the whole but sneak down. You have to bring the push soaker flag yes. and banners and everything. Yes. yes, that's the plan. That yes. is definitely in the plan. Yeah. So have you ever been to London? I have not. I want to come. Yeah. <laughs> Especially to Notting Hill Carnival. We I have not. Love you here. Honestly. I have not. Look at Stabby. Hello, Stabby. Stabby. Boy, boy. Hey, look, Stabby just came out with a song too. Yeah. Not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. He's bad. Bad, bad. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. <Stephanie's>. Okay. <laughs> so, what can we expect next from you then? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm actually working on some things as it relates to soca shirts. I'm trying to get, uh, I do a lot of sets for women's, but I'm trying to get some more like guy things worked out. Yes. And I really just work on what I have access to. So whatever you see is what I can get my hands on physically. Cause I don't really like to buy things that I have to wait on and right. see how they fit and that kind of thing. So I'm working on more guy things right now. Um, yeah. More quality things. Cause I also like all of my stuff. It's not, it's something that you're going to have for a long time. It's not right. anything that's flimsy. I, I've had, I made this shirt in like November or something and have washed it. I don't know how many times, but you would never be able to tell. So I always look for quality yeah. clothing and that's kind of mm -hmm. what I'm looking for right now, just to expand the guy side of it. Mm -hmm. um, but Houston is having a carnival soon. So I'm probably going to, uh, you know, appear somewhere down there. That's another thing. I've been doing appearances. I don't even know how to do that. I'm like, wait, you want me to like be in a VIP section or something? Because <laughs> I need to be by the stage, by the yeah. DJ, so I can let him know that he's mm -hmm. doing a great job. I can't be yes. all the way over here in the corner. I'm not a VIP be like, person. VIP is, VIP is not all that. Because I'm not stush. I can't stay back there. Exactly. I want to be on the stage dance sometimes. Dancing. And getting on. Watching. Yes. But Hello. Out. Hello. <laughs> can I go dance with the DJ? Yeah. Every girl bubble on a DJ. Can I go? I can't do that in VIP. <laughs> so. I love it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, anybody that's watching, if you book me for an appearance, do not put me in VIP. Thanks. Exactly. Put her right. near the DJ. Please let me be <laughs> near the, the DJ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the stage, on the ground, somewhere. I just need to be mm -hmm. right there so that way I can have enough room because I cannot do anything in vip what am i supposed to do yeah the people don't want me climbing on their furniture <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna get mad and put me out <laughs> so where do you see soca shirts in the next couple of years um that's a good question uh because i didn't really see me this far i don't really <laughs> you're doing amazing so yeah it's interesting um yeah I don't know. Uh, my goal would be Sorry. to have like um, a place in the islands on every mm -hmm. island to where it's like uh, a hotel or something almost. Mm -hmm. But a hotel to where it could be like the lower floor would be a mall almost and Soka Shirts yeah. would be in there but the whole building is actually owned by me. But so that way, like, whenever it's carnival time or fete time or whatever, people on the island can stay there or people who are coming in can stay there. Mm -hmm. Something like an Airbnb type of hotel. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. that. Like a big, a big, yeah, a bigger version of it. But a place to where the local entrepreneurs can come and put their um, stores and stuff. Because, like, my office right here, like, I'll, sh I'll show you what I got here going on. This is my office. <laughs> Love it. So start here. That's a table of work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need a nap. So do you print your own t-shirt? Yes, I do. So right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. All of my okay. stuff. Yeah. Um, but here in this building that I'm, I'm in a building in downtown Dallas and it's like one of the high rise buildings, but on my particular floor, there is different people. There's like a radio station. There's a girl that does hair. There's a girl that, um, does, uh, what does she do? Like a spa place. Um, but it's multiple businesses. So when I heard this idea, I was like, man, that would be so nice for, on the islands because I know a lot of times they don't necessarily get the opportunity to have their own office space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if I go down there and build a huge building and just have the bottom layer of it be just that like open mm -hmm. spaces where people can kind of bounce in and out of to see yeah. if their business works, you know, mm -hmm. not charge them too much for rent, but just give them the opportunity. I think that would be great because every time I've ever gone to an Island, like my friends always take care of me. I got people everywhere. They always mm -hmm. take care of me. Like, I don't even know what else to say, <laughs> but, but I'm always thinking to myself, um, I want to buy with everybody there. Like I want to buy with my friends, friends, mm -hmm. but we're going into their houses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to set them up a little bit better. Um, yes, blue fire. We do need to talk. So I want to set them up a little bit better. So that way it's a space of, it's okay. If your business is failing, I'm not going to put you out. But mm -hmm. just continue to get better. Just keep pushing forward. Just you know what I'm saying. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm looking for okay. to do within the next time What's frame, probably like five years. Your favorite island to visit? Um, let's see. I'll have to say Saint Martin and Anguilla. I just can't mm -hmm. even get over it. <laughs> Beautiful island. <laughs> Cannot get over it. I went to St. Martin for Carnival um, May 2019, and then I doubled back and went to um, Anguilla in August of that year. And my God, mm -hmm. I cried when I left. I swam in both of the oceans. <laughs> I cried and everything. It was so sad, but it was different because it was like, as soon as I reached... Everywhere I go, every island I go to, as soon as I reach there, they always feel like I'm from there for whatever reason. I don't yes. know, maybe my essence. I, but... I feel like she's a Trini right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Most people thought I was Trini for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. Um, my last name is Joseph, though, so I mean, this is yeah, cousins. Yeah, exactly, this is cousins. <laughs> but um, in Anguilla, like, okay, it's small island, right? So mm -hmm. small island rhythms, small island rhythms, and... Um, yeah. St. Martin, Small Island Ruins, and Anguilla, and just everybody was just so, it, it, it reminded me of Louisiana, really. Everybody was just so homey. Everybody was just so welcoming. Mm -hmm. And even, like, when the bands were playing, it's, like, being from Louisiana, growing up and going to the French quarters, there's live bands all the time. I grew up around live music. That's all I've ever seen. So to go there and then hear live song, I'm like, oh, let's go, let me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then plus in St. Martin, they speak, um, French Creole, yeah, Creole yeah. Uh, it's a little different again, but they say Como Sa Va, we say Como Sa Va too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just like another connection for me. I was like, wait, is that Creole I right hear? Wait a minute. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, honestly. We need to get you back on the live. Cause yeah, for sure. We're going to do something different, maybe like host a class or something. Yeah. Or I can even like join the We Check In. Line yes, please. Love. Can you? We I need love to set that up. Stuff. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I'll DM you. I'll DM you. Yeah, yeah we'll please. Talk about, we get a topic and we'll talk about it and promote it and. Yes, yes. please. We should do please. Something. I would love to have you on yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, I love your energy. Oh, love Thank it. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and DM me your address. I'm gonna mail yeah. you something. Okay. No problem yes. at all. But yeah, we need to get. I get. I'm gonna get some merch sent to you as well, so don't you worry. I'm just yes. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for having me no, on here. I really Thank appreciate you so it. Much for joining. Just keep doing what you're doing, keep grinding. I mean, we're seeing your hard work. We love your energy. We love your videos. You know, don't let anyone tell you different. Just keep doing you. Like, keep doing you. Keep shining, honestly. And Thank it's been you a so pleasure much. speaking to you. You make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll speak soon. You as well. And you have a good night. You too. Right. Bye, girl. Bye. So, everyone, thank you for being on the live. <laughs> that was Soka Shirts. 
if you're not following Soka Shirts, what are you waiting for? Follow her page. She is such a beautiful soul, honestly. Well, yes, next up, we've got Rock. Um, I'm just watching time, so I'm going to save Soka Shirts Live, and then we'll be back with Rock, okay? So don't go anywhere, guys. Join us back shortly. Bye.